Hey guys, Cal Torak here. Wowhead has data mined the Phase 2 PTR build, and we've got a lot of new information. If you would prefer to keep this stuff secret, spoiler warnings ahead. I'll be going over all the information and items that are helpful to mages. Let's get into it. I do want to quickly mention this tweet from Agrand. He's the lead developer on Classic WoW Season of Discovery. He does warn that some of this is experimental, and that some of it will never see the light of day. So take some of it with a grain of salt. Either way, we're diving in. Let's start with Gnomer loot. We got some pretty awesome items here. Starting with weapons, arcane mages get defibrillating staff. Big bonus healing and big arcane damage. Should be prioed to arcane mages, and honestly it's pretty sick. We also have staff of evil genius, a good filler staff. For one-handers, we have the dagger glimmering gizmo blade. The bonus armor would make this Warlock tank prio, but outside of that, this is a huge pickup for mages. We would pair it with the offhand the Necronomicon, or 970 Repair Manual. We got two awesome wands, Izzelflix Inextinguishable Igniter, and Mechano Strider Gear Shifter. Mechano Strider Gear Shifter is going to be huge, not just for the 9 spell damage, but it's also dealing arcane damage for healing. Onto jewelry, we have two neck options. Piston Pendant, and Pendant of Homecoming. Always nice to scoop some MP5 when we can. For rings, we have Hypercharged Gear of Innovation and Conflagration, as well as the Electrocutioner's Hexnut. For trinkets, we have the Miniaturized Combustion Chamber. Moving on to armors, for shoulders we have the Synthetic Mantle. Probably Warlock Tank Prio, but still a solid pickup for us. For cloaks, we have Cloak of Invention and Ingenuity's Cover. Now I know I've been showing a lot of healing items. Right now, plus healing gear isn't the best for healing mages. They scale better off of spell damage since most of their healing comes from their damage. That being said, in case some of the new runes scale with healing, I am including a bunch of these healing items. For chests, we got a lot of options here. Mages will be after the irradiated robes though. One of the big drawbacks with the mage DPS set is the minus stamina it gives as you'll see on the other set pieces. For pants, we have irradiated trousers, and boots, irradiated boots. Really good set, as it has a lot of hit, crit, and damage, but you'll be losing 35 stamina when wearing this set, which is quite a lot. The trade-off is probably worth it, but not a fan of the minus stamina, especially for dungeon farming and such. For bracers, we've got Lev's oil stain bindings, these are worse than the Exalted Warsong Gulch Bracers, so if you're Exalted with them, you won't be picking these up. For gloves, we have Fighter Ace Gloves, which are worse than the Dreamweave Gloves. For belt, we have Volatile Concoction Belt. Nice hit chance with damage. Also has high armor though, so probably Warlock Tank Prio. Highlander's Cloth Girdle will be better if we don't need the hit. That's it for the Noma Raid loot. Let's move on to the PvP event. Mages get access to three Blood Harvest items, all rings. I am kind of disappointed by this, as other classes are getting some pretty awesome weapons and items. We end up with three rings that only give us specific spell damage. Don't get me wrong, these rings are sick. But look at this Paladin Sword. Would have been nice to have gotten things more along these lines, but hey, these rings are going to be awesome. For quality of life spellbooks, mages currently only have one, Expanded Intellect. Reduces the cost of AI and increases its duration. Nice quality of life. Was hoping to see Refreshment Table on this list, since Warlocks are getting Summoning Table. One day, I hope. Alright, let's talk about runes. Next phase, we are getting Waste and Feet runes, I believe, but Wildhead has demined the runes for Helms and Wrist as well. These are probably coming in Phase 3, so if you don't want Phase 3 spoilers, click off now. Starting with the Phase 2 runes, let's go with the Feet slot. For Feet, we get Brain Freeze, Chronostatic Preservation, and Spell Power. Brain Freeze is neat and all, but I definitely assume most mages are going to be running Spell Power in their feet slot. 50% increased critical strike damage is amazing. For Belt, we have a lot of options here. Frostfire Bolt, Hot Streak, Missile Barrage, and Spell Frost Bolt. I am a bit sad that Hot Streak isn't giving us instant cast Flame Strikes, but that probably would have been too OP for AoE farming. Frostfire Bolt is whatever, not super hyped about that. 
Missile Barrage is massive for Arcane Rotation. I'm so hyped about this spell, to be honest. Spell Frost Bolt is interesting, though. Gives PvP Mages a nice healing option they can span. Not sure this will make Frost Healing viable in PvE, but this should be massive for PvP. Okay, on to what we assume is Phase 3 runes. Starting with Wrist, we got Balefire Bolt, Displacement, and Molten Armor. Displacement will be cool for PvP, and I assume Molten Armor will be the default PvE rune, but I am super curious about Balefire Bolt. It's honestly the rune I'm most hyped about. It reads, each time you cast Balefire Bolt, the damage of your next Balefire Bolt within 30 seconds will be increased by 10%, and your spirit will be decreased by 10% for 30 seconds, both stacking up to 10 times. If your spirit reaches zero as consequence, you will immediately die. It's kind of like when Priest had Surrender to Madness. It's a pretty cool mechanic. Not sure how it'll work or if it'll scale well. Looks like it does Arcane and Fire damage, so Arcane and Fire Mages might be using this over Molten Armor. For Helm Slots, we only got two right now. Deep Freeze, which is a PvP stun, and Temporal Anomaly. Seems like a good healing ability. Launches an orb forward and shields members it hits. Should be good for sending into melee clumps and shielding them up. Curious what other runes mages will get in this helm slot later. Okay, let's talk about class balance changes. Feel like every mage on the planet knew this nerf was coming, but Living Flame has been nerfed. If you read the text for Temporal Beacon, it has been changed. It used to say that it reduced the damage of Arcane Explosion by 80%, but now that is taken into account all AoE spells. This includes Living Flame. Honestly, I think this is a good change. Mages were kind of out of control. It was ridiculous that mages could face tank 100 plus mobs in Wailing Caverns. I would have maybe have preferred to see a target cap instead, but this is to be expected. Quickly talking about professions, we do have a new alchemy potion. That's pretty awesome. As far as professions, I think we'll either be engineering and tailoring or tailoring and chanting. I'm not sure what will be better yet, but I assume I'll still be tailoring and engineering. There's also a new world buff that comes from Nover, and its stats are pretty crazy. Okay, I believe that's everything. If you're curious as what build I'll be running at the start of Phase 2, I'm pretty sure I'll be doing this build for PvE rating. I definitely will be playing Deep Arcane, and this just makes the most sense to me. If you're Fire, you might be using Frostfire Bolt. Not sure yet. We just have to wait for the Sims for that kind of stuff. If you found this video helpful or enjoyable, please like and subscribe. Take care, guys, and see you in Phase 2. Castle Warriors is a deck-building auto-battler with a strategy twist. Recruit between 50 unique mercenaries to build your army. Choose between 8 distinct warriors and support your troops with powerful abilities to win your battles. Whether it's using special artifacts or acquiring new talents, every battle in Castle Warriors is different. So, how will you play? Castle Warriors, now on Steam and Early Access.